Welcome to this edition of Jacksonville University's The Dolphin Channel News. I'm Alyssa Fernald, bringing you news from JU's campus and the community. JU earns national recognition among regional colleges. One of the South's best, that's what U.S. News and World Report has to say about JU. For the eighth consecutive year, JU ranks as one of the top universities in the South, coming in at 46th on the list, an honor Dr. Derek Hall, Vice President of University Relations and External Affairs, believes is well-deserved. It's important for us to be on that list. Um, a lot of people in higher education really don't agree with the methodology related to the list and and you know this whole ranking thing but it's part of the game you know we're all in. Variables that factor into the ranking include student to faculty ratio, class size, graduation rate, percentage of full-time faculty, student selectivity, average SAT and ACT scores, percentage of highly ranked freshmen, and alumni giving rate. JU ranking gives us the distinction of coming in the highest of any college or university in Northeast Florida. Jacksonville University's Naval Recruitment Officer Training Program celebrates 40 years. September 23rd of 1971 marked the dedication of the first NROTC unit at JU, one of four universities in the state that offers training. The anniversary was celebrated by an alumni reception, campus tour, formal dinner, and the Jacksonville Jaguars, Tennessee Titans, JU Alumni Game Day. JU leads the state when it comes to nurse practitioner doctorates, four years ahead of the requirements. This fall, JU adds its first doctoral degree, a doctorate in nursing practice. Professor Tiffany Mickens, a student in the program, explains the expertise. But however, for nurse practitioners, it just kind of makes us experts in our field. In the year 2015, it'll be mandated that all nurse practitioners have, have to be um, doctorally prepared. As of now, the program only includes a part-time role. Once it matures, then a full-time enrollment becomes applicable. Dr. Lee Hart, professor of nursing, sees this program being full of promise. I think the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree is a fantastic way for Jacksonville University to begin offering doctoral programs. Um, unlike a PhD, which is a re research-focused degree, the Doctor of Nursing Practice is what we call a clinical doctorate. So the focus is on what we actually do in clinical practice. Instead of generating original research for the discipline like they do in the PhD, the Doctor of Nursing Practice integrates research into clinical practice at the bedside. I think that students like the fact that we have a doctoral program so they know that we're looking at nursing across the spectrum so that makes our undergraduate program more attractive to them because they know that we're not just focused on one slice of the pie that we're looking at nursing across the spectrum up to the highest degree. I think there will be additional doctoral degrees at Jacksonville University in the future and that's just a trend that we're seeing for universities are putting more emphasis on graduate education. By 2015 the study for doctoral level nurses plans to include nurse anesthesiists, nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, and nurse midwives. Jacksonville University's marine science students put their expertise to the test with a live manatee rescue. A few blocks from campus, four manatees were stranded on the banks of the St. Johns River. The manatees weighing in at over two tons needed a team of 20 people, including JU students. The rescue took nearly two hours. For Dr. Gerard Pinto, Associate Research Scientist, the hands-on experience offered JU students an exciting learning opportunity. This was a nice opportunity for them to just drop what they were doing, come running out there, uh, be part of a, a, a great teamwork that suddenly just came together and worked so well together. And to be part of it was, was really wonderful for them. Those are the type of impressions that you remember as a student. The female manatees most likely swam into the shallow waters to avoid the males during mating season. All of the manatees were returned safely in good health. JU Aviation students receive recognition from the Jacksonville City Council. 
On Tuesday, September 13th, the City Council of Jacksonville recognized JU alumni Sarah Morris and Leah Hetzel for winning the 2011 Air Race Classic, also known as the All-Women Transcontinental National Air Race. During this air race, Hetzel and Morris became only the second collegiate team to take home the title. There were 43 teams that finished the race out of the 50 that started. Hetzel and Morris hope to see more female aviation majors at JU in the future. Jacksonville University commemorates Flo Davis, one of the university's longtime supporters. Florence Novinger Davis passed away this September at the age of 101. Davis was the first woman to serve as a JU Board of Trustee and Chair of the Board, serving her position for nearly 50 years. Davis and her family gave generously to the university, creating living legacies on campus, including the Davis College of Business, Davis Student Commons, Friends of the Library, and Friends of Fine Arts. Florence Davis received the Ev Award for Volunteer Service in 1979, a North Florida and Southern Georgia tradition honoring women for their efforts in education, volunteer service, and employment. In lieu of flowers, the Davis family requests that donations be made to Community Connections, Mayo Clinic, Jacksonville University, or Seamark Ranch in memory of Florence Davis. Now for sports. With temperatures climbing to the 90s almost daily, student athletes need to be aware of the possibility of heat illnesses. New and returning Jacksonville University athletes are surrounded by great staff. Not only are trainers and coaches concerned about improving performance, they also know that student health is a top priority, especially with the Florida heat. Nicholas Dreger, one of Jacksonville University's athletic trainers, knows firsthand how important it is to stay hydrated in this weather. For student athletes, hydration is of the utmost importance, especially in the state of Florida with how hot it gets. It's very essential so that you don't develop heat stroke and heat exhaustion to consume a lot of fluids, and not just right before practice, but you want to be consuming fluids throughout the entire day. Charts are placed where athletes can continuously see them as a helpful reminder to stay hydrated. Despite the heat, JU's athletes continue to excel over their competitors. On another note, JU's starting kick returner receives national recognition. Colby Walden, a junior here at JU, was named National Kick Returner of the Week along with being named Player of the Week for special teams by the Pioneer Football League. Although Walden enjoys getting awards, that is not the only reason he steps on the field. These awards have set his goals for the season at an all-time high. Walden will continue his successes for the rest of their season that consists of all conference games. The football team will be playing Moorhead State this weekend. Homecoming brings other surprises as former JU athletes come back to support the teams. Both men and women former JU soccer players have been invited back to campus for a special reunion. The events feature the SunTrust River City Rumble matchup, which kicks off on Friday night with the ladies hosting UNF. The reunion continues on Saturday with a celebration before the men take on UNF. The reunion will also include a golf outing, a rap party, a shootout, and a luau to keep the former student athletes entertained. Success rings true for JU women's softball team. Presented by athletic director Alan Verlander, the ladies receive rings for their ASUN conference title at the first home football game of the year. Like none of us have obviously ever done it before, so we weren't quite sure what we were in for, but it was good. Uh, it was kind of hard because Verlander was making a few jokes going down the line, so we were like trying to be professional, but at the same time we're all laughing. But um, it was still an exciting moment. Just. I mean, once again, getting your rings, like, you won, <laughs> so. We definitely had a few criers, like, satisfaction that, like, we did it. Like, we accomplished our goal, we could win this amount of games. And to see us, like, exceed our goals was one of the best things. And not only exceed them, but win conference and get a berth. Like, we've never gotten a berth to an, the NCAA tournament. So getting that berth was huge. The team promoted their assistant coach, Allie Higgs, to head coach this season. This year's volleyball season is underway, and Dolphin fans are excited to see what's in store. The women's volleyball has already spiked off to a much better start than last year. Senior defensive player Ashley August and some talented recruits have a big reason to do with that. Compared to last year, we brought in some amazing recruits, as well as everyone working hard over the summer and it was great to have everybody come back in shape, ready to go for preseason. 
coming back has definitely given us a good start to the year. The Dolphins start their conference play this Friday against Florida Gulf Coast University. A very exciting second half of the season approaches with many upcoming home games. Be sure to come out and support your Lady Dolphins at Swisher Gymnasium next week. International exposure for one Lady Dolphin as she takes to the field with the United European Football Association. Make no mistake about it, sophomore Adriana Rodriguez considers herself a Florida girl who happens to have three citizenships, American, Brazilian, and Portuguese. But it's her Portuguese passport that allowed communications major Adriana Rodriguez to score a chance of a lifetime. The 19-year-old from St. Petersburg got the call early this month and found herself on a flight to Lisbon before the week was up. For Adriana, the opportunity marks the beginning of a childhood dream come true. Just travel and see the world just because I play a sport and doing something that I love is just like, that's my dream. Like, to, to be doing something you love and getting world culture and knowledge and stuff like that is perfect. For head coach Brian Cobham, Adriana's international experience strengthens the entire team's level of play. It's a great honor anytime you get the opportunity to play for your country. Uh, so for Adriana to get to go to Portugal and play in a European, European qualifying match, we're very excited for her and also it's exciting for the program to have somebody to be able to play at that level. Adriana's teammates notice her experience overseas brings a welcome addition to the field. Um, it's a privilege to be able to play with someone who gets to go and do that for her country and um, considering she's a good friend of mine it's just like it's an honor to have someone who could tell me about her experience. It's more than a team family for Adriana. Her 21 year old sister Andrea also received the call making the American sisters the only siblings on the team. In high school we played with each other that was the only time we played with each other and it was like really cool because she's a forward kind of and I'm a midfielder side passer and we she'd be the one that would score so it was kind of the same, um, the same thing here with the Portugal national team, and it was also, um, it was just like a uh, pride for our family, just like to have both girls on the national team for our country. She now plans on continuing on the Portuguese national team and becoming one of their star players. Reporting for the Dolphin Channel, I'm Alicia Esteban. Thanks, Alicia. You can catch Adriana in action during the next home match for the Lady Dolphins this weekend. The dance team, a new program at JU, made its debut at the first home football game earlier this month. Five, six, seven, eight. The team has grown from eight last semester to 15. Practicing many times a week, the girls work to showcase dances they can feel proud of. For sophomore and captain of the team, Tafazwa, the dance team brings a new level of school spirit to the field. I felt as though we didn't have enough spirit at the school, so I thought that a dance team would bring it up more. It's been five years since JU has had a dance team, and these ladies plan to have staying power. The dance team continues to prepare, working to maintain a lasting presence and image on campus. You can see the dancers in action during the next home game during halftime. A tradition at JU continues as the class of 2012 determines their legacy to the university. Class gifts, a relatively new idea here on campus, have included a water fountain in front of the Davis Student Commons, the River of Dolphins located at the Gooding Building, 10 circular benches around campus, and the newest addition, a graffiti wall in front of the Kinney Center. Dr. Karen Jackson, director of the Center for Teaching and Learning and professor of biology, works with the Green Key Society in choosing the class gift. The class gift is the first chance you get to give back to the university, to say thank you for the intangibles, the things that the university gave you that we can't put in the promotional materials, the friendships, the bonds, the mentorship, the leadership, the guidance, the shoulders to cry on. That's the reason you give back. That's the reason you say thank you. Seniors completed the survey last week. The top three suggestions will be put to a vote and a decision will be announced in the next few weeks. Seniors, be sure to check your JU email to vote on the next survey. 2011 has been a year of firsts for Jacksonville University sailing. David Cotton tells us more. Saturday morning, students dock their boats at the Epping Forest Marina. Participating schools from all over the country raced in the single hand championships, the first collegiate event ever hosted by JU. The regatta consists of small one-man laser dinghies in a series of small races. Although no JU sailors are racing, Professor of Education Dr. Stephen Davis knows the exposure will help propel the sport. Well, we're hosting this event to bring visibility to our program, to JU as well, but to the sailing program at JU. Uh, we're a bit of an unknown entity. 
For nearly all of the racers today, this will mark the first time any of them have sailed on the St. Johns River, let alone competed. Uh, I actually normally sail in the ocean. I sail up north in Long Island Sound and um, on the south side of Long Island. Um, so I'm not really used to a river, but I've sailed in rivers before. Well, never been here before. I don't know that many of us have been here before, um, but it looks like a beautiful spot. Uh, we're used to sailing on a river in Charleston, so we're looking for similar conditions. Um, it's got a beautiful day, nice breeze. Looks like there's a little bit of current out there. JU sailors know exactly what's in their backyard. That's a huge asset. Um, the river is right behind our school, and I use it three, four, five times a week. Moving forward, the JU Sailing Club hopes to become a varsity level sport. Reporting for the Dolphin Channel, I'm David Caught. Sailing Club will host and race in their next event at the Florida Yacht Club November 11th and 12th. JU's Performing Arts Department welcomes John Ricci in concert. <laughs> John Ricci, saxophonist and director of jazz studies at Jacksonville University, performed with his own group in Swisher Theater last Saturday, featuring some of his original works and arrangements. A variety of instrumental jazz music and performing artists attracted visitors from all over Jacksonville. The art department also opens its curtains, staging a new musical story. Reporter Sarah Mecklenburg takes us behind the scenes. I'm up here on the stage of Swisher Theatre, featuring the new musical Little Woman, based on a novel by Louisa May Arcade in 1868. Actors and staff are more than ready for the show to start. Released on Broadway in 2005, Little Woman displays the lives of four sisters between poverty, wealth, family love, sister rivalry, and female independence. For musical director Kim Beasley, voice assistant professor at JU, the characters and themes resonate with today's contemporary audience. There's the four girls, Meg and Joe, Beth and Amy, and their mother Marmy. Then we've got Lori, Mr. Lawrence, Professor Bear, John Brooke, and Aunt March. Joe is the second daughter and she's the writer. And some people think that it's Little Women is semi-autobiographical. Joe has to learn to accept what it is that her sisters are doing in their lives. With seven weeks of rehearsal, the actors are prepared with intensive character research paying off. I tried to kind of simulate professional theater as much as I could with our rehearsal time in the space. We will have spent about four weeks here in the theater. We spent the first three weeks doing a lot of research and preparing for, for the characters and for the roles and talking about the story. And the character studies really paid off. They understand their roles very well. I'm very particular about how somebody looks and whether they look the part. I then have to consider vocal characteristics. And some of these parts, it was okay if I didn't have exactly the voice type that I needed. And then other parts were very specific. Meg has to be a soprano. Joe has to be a mezzo-soprano. I am Joe March, and she's special just because of her ambition and drive to fulfill her dreams and keep her family together. I play Professor Fritz Baer, and he is sort of a catalyst of change for Joe. With JU musicians and actors, the cast is exclusively students, working together on every detail, now ready for the debut. My costume designer, Janae LaFleur, is um, a senior here at JU. I have the JU Orchestra playing in the pit for this show, so we didn't hire any musicians, it's all students. This musical is really special because it has everything. You laugh and you cry, and it's really about the bond of sisterhood and also about falling in love. I think that our disciplined and methodical preparation will result in a very emotional and genuine telling of this story. I'm very excited to be in front of an audience of my family and friends, and I think that we're ready. We're ready to go. I'm so ready for the show. I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. The Weighted Musical starts this Thursday, October 15th, 7.30 p.m. in Swisher Theatre and will be performed every day until Sunday. Admission is free for a JU student with your student ID and the public is welcome. Let the show begin. For more information on upcoming events, go to arts.ju.edu.
Each year during October, the JU Choir harmonizes with other collegiate choral groups. This year, JU played host to the other choirs in the Terry Concert Hall Friday night. The Intercollegiate Choral Festival exposes music students from other schools to each other and brings about a healthy competition. Each school had a chance to sing individual selections and at the end came together to form a massive choir to conclude the concert. Next year, UNF will host the event. This semester brings a new art professor who is eager to teach. Lily Coonan begins her first year teaching art at Jacksonville University. Graduating from Savannah College of Art and Design, she hopes to bring about new challenges along with new curriculum to JU's art department. It's important for students to experience art in order for them to immerse themselves into a cultural activity where their skills get compounded and applied uh, throughout the whole course of study. And the process that we use here is really about experiential learning. While improving students' art skills, Professor Kunin also plans to help challenge students' creative problem-solving skills that may be applied to many aspects in a JU graduate's life. Professor Kunin plans to teach at JU for many years to come. Challenge yourself and others. JU's freshman essay contest ends in less than two weeks. For Director of Academic Engagement, Char Wedge, the essay contest represents an exciting opportunity. The essay contest is designed specifically for freshman students, so you have to be a full-time JU first-year student with less than 24 academic credits. And you also have to have read Enrique's Journey. You have to write a minimum 2,000 word essay. We have a couple of prompts that we have put on the website as well as in this little booklet that we passed out to JU 101 freshmen that explains all of the contest rules and what they will be judged on. The first prize is an iPod Touch and the second prize is a Kindle. The prize winners are going to be among the best writers at Jacksonville University. This is a great opportunity to shine. All submissions must be received by Friday midnight, October 14th. For more information, email charwedge at cwedge at ju.edu. That's going to do it for this edition of Jacksonville University's The Dolphin Channel News. You can find more of our award-winning work on our website at tv.ju.edu or on YouTube under The Dolphin Channel. Also, you can follow us on Facebook. I'm Alyssa Fernald. From all of us here at The Dolphin Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.